Hi, and welcome to What Women and Men Need to Know. Today, Denise Shahan, my very good friend, is joining me, and we're going to be talking about how to pack the suitcase. The dreaded part of going on a trip, Denise. The worst part. The worst part. <laughs> you know, school is out. People maybe have long um, planned vacation plans, but school's out, and now everybody's getting ready, and it's it's get on your set. <laughs> Mark, get set and go. go. <laughs> but once again, you got to pack before you can go. It would be great if someone would just come in. I'm going to get Denise to oh, come yes. pack my suitcase oh, yes. for me. I hate packing. It's just this dread. Ugh, I hate packing. So I usually just get everything clean and then kind of start from there. I, you know, well, this, maybe that. But if you don't like to pack either. Denise is the pro. She yeah. has more trips <laughs> under her belt than I can begin to tell you. And when you pack any more, if you're flying, it's more than about what you like to do. It's more about what safety. you have to do. Safety. And for safety. So um, if you get a pen and paper, you might want to take some notes today because she's going to cover it all. We're going to be talking fast for the next hour. So get ready, get set, because we're going to go. go. So go, Denise. Okay. Helen said it, of course. The first thing that I have to do before I pack even one item is to go ahead and get everything washed, dried, any pressing, any dry cleaning, and get that ready. Because you can't just do it helter-skelter. And um, I have a very set pattern that I use. I don't know if I'm the most traveled person but I used to travel for business, and now I travel strictly for pleasure. And um, so it depends on if you have an overnight or long weekend planned, if you have a week-long trip, or if you're going to be gone on an extended vacation. Um, it depends on the length of time that you're gone as to which bag you're going to pack. You don't want to pull out the big, heavy-duty monster suitcase for just a weekend. And um, so it helps to have the appropriate bag at hand for your trip. So for an overnight or long weekend, I have brought my trusty Weekender is what this is called. And this one is a Vera Bradley, but you can pick these up at any just about any uh, department store or specialty shop or anything. And I love it because it has outside pockets. It zips closed. It also has an optional shoulder strap. With a pad. Mm -hmm. With a pad on the shoulder. You open it up and you have inside pockets lots, on lots, both lots sides. Pockets. So this little jewel right here can hold a ton of things. Anytime you're packing anything, bear in mind, you're going to have to pick it up eventually, and you're going to have to carry it for short distances, or sometimes long distances. So whatever you put in here, make sure that you can handle it along with other things that you have to manage on your trip. So this is a weekender, something that always goes with me is this little uh, personal items bag, or some people call it a toiletries bag, and it rolls up, it's soft sided, and it has a hanger right here so that when you get to your destination you can hang it on the road hook, or on the back of the door, or next to the sink. And it has little pockets. It has a zipper. All of these are zippered. All of them are lined with plastic. And in here I have my saline nasal spray. I have my travel size um, toiletries, my bath gel, my lotion. And I have my eyeglasses in their case. And this always goes with me in a carry-on. I carry my extra contact lenses in case. I've got my little comb for my hair, deodorant, floss sticks, uh, toothbrush. toothbrush in a travel tube, and usually I have my toothpaste in there, but that's something I have to buy. And then any personal items can go up here. 
and this just rolls up like this, ties together. It has the handles and you're ready to go and this even fits inside a tote bag. Um, speaking of tote bags, I've carried this one as a weekender and this is from a um, home sales, online sales company. Um, let's see, 31, it's a bags company and you can get all kinds of things. It doesn't have inside pockets but it's got good grommets on the straps, which are important because oftentimes if you're carrying a heavy bag like this, the straps can give way on you. It does have outside pockets and- a water bottle. Yes, and a water bottle holder on both ends. So you can put cell phone in one and water bottle in the other or whatever. And always, I like a tote that zips shut. It just is, to have an open tote on a trip is an open invitation to theft. Someone can reach right in yes. and be gone before you know it. This tote can hold a lot and it can also double as your purse mm -hmm. or as your beach bag. And inside here, I have a fold up canvas bag. And this one happened to come with a pair of shoes or a purse, I think. But this can hold lots of goodies when you go shopping for souvenirs or gift items or whatever. And it just tucks away into nothingness and doesn't take up a lot of room. But, but you have a it. lot of shopping. Yes, um, yes. it's your goodies. spare. Mm -hmm. So those are some different things. I have here this piece of luggage, which is my trusty roll-on bag. Now, do you, is that a carry-on? Is that a it can be? A yes, it's carry -on It's a bag? certified carry-on. Let me turn it around because so it you can looks see it. Large and for a it, carry -on. it has four wheels on it. It has two outside pockets that I love. You can put uh, reading material in here, umbrella. and um, um, yeah, a little umbrella or whatever. You can put your travel documents in here. And also get you, if your luggage doesn't come with it, get you one of these uh, strap attachments so that you can piggyback other bags, like your tote bags. And when you extend the handle on this, and this one rolls around freely so it doesn't get caught on a lot of things, but you've got everything with one handle to hang on to and it's all secured here. And that's the new that's the new thing about luggage. Um, and here's is the, the inside. Is the new wheels the inline skate yes. type wheels? Yes. Because they will go in all four directions. You can roll them right along beside you as you go. You don't have to push or pull. You can just simply um, move them right mm -hmm. along beside you with your hand. It's like walking the, a dog. Yes. I mean, you can just simply put your hand on it and move it right along beside yes. you and you don't have to have it behind you you don't know you can't see we don't have a little mirror so we can see right. what might be going on someone might be you know trying to tamper with their luggage behind and we can show you how to get a week long trip worth of clothing and items that you need into this rolling carry-on and one tote bag and then over a week-long trip, over a week, uh, an extended vacation, if you will, or a touring vacation, you'll want to take a large rolling suitcase or duffel, and the key word on all of these pieces, except for the totes and the weekenders, is rolling, because, uh, again, you don't want to have to heft um, through long lines at security or whatever you don't want to have to haul all that luggage on your shoulder or carrying it in your hand gone are the days of the good old-fashioned samsonite hard-sided pick it up by the handle that we and all carry. got for college yes, when we graduated that we all got uh, years ago yeah, yes right. now what would you consider size-wise to be a good size denise for that checked bag um, I mean, there's some one, you one a little, in, you yeah, know, and, one a little larger than this, of course, especially for an extended trip, um, or if you have two people traveling together, you might consider 
a huge bag, you know, but again, it has to roll and you can pack both of your things in that huge bag or just the next size up from this, a little bit larger, is good for um, a check bag. And you remember, you someone at some time has to lift that yes. bag too. Yes, and it does have a lift limit, and we'll talk about that shortly. But um, these are the different types of bags. Helen has hers all packed so neatly over here. No, really, <laughs> but, but I might pick it up if you... Uh, will because okay. it is a little different in the construction. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to have to zip it back to pick it up. Uh, because mine is a, it's hard a hard side, and the one Denise has is a soft side. So that's a difference in the options that are there. Uh, and it's just a preference of what. Uh, what what's out right. there to choose from but the most important thing is down on the end and that's the um the wheels you see the wheels go in every direction 360 degrees and that's what you want to look for preferably four wheels and not two wheels right and some of them do have two wheels. some of them only have two and so, they're very tiny yes. stationary wheels and you the the quality of the wheel is what's mm -hmm. important and you want to make sure that you do have good quality luggage so you get good quality wheels because if the wheels yes. it's like having a flat tire Denise you can go yes. wide open until you have a flat tire and, and then you're want, want good tires and then you're you're out of, you know you're out of commission when the when you have the flat tire so do make sure that you get good that you have good quality luggage because you want good wheels on these things and and a note about that good quality doesn't mean expensive no you don't have to go out and buy louis vuitton you, you know luggage in fact i would luggage. never do that no. because if you fly if you go on a ship if you go on a train uh oftentimes even just at hotels have you ever watched people load these babies on an airplane it's like, it's like, it's like walk onto the conveyor belt. Almost, right. And then when they come out on those little luggage dollies to get on the conveyor belt, they're stacked up and just thrown onto those little dollies first. And so they take a beating. Yes. And uh, that's one reason for the hard side luggage. Another reason that is yucky in today's world, but it's a fact, is the threat of bed bugs and it's an international dilemma and has been for a number of years but the soft-sided luggage the um, bed bugs can kind of put their eggs right there along the zipper or even down in crevices you know around some of these areas like this little doodad right here that's a buffer on the bottom and uh, you don't even know it and all of a sudden your home's infested and you're going where did i get those bed bugs Fortunately, knock on wood, we've never experienced that, but that is another reason why a lot of people are going to the hard-sided luggage in today's world. And let me just mention one more thing is the length that your um, handle extends. If you're yes. tall, I never have these problems. No, I don't either. <laughs> but if you're tall, you do want to look at the amount of extension that your um, you don't handle. want to be walking bent over like that this. That could make for you sure. very yes. uncomfortable. So make sure some of them don't extend even as far as this one. And, right. Uh, it will limit what you can piggyback also. So yes. make sure that you do have. The and make sure this arm is good and strong right. too, and, or you can't piggyback very right. well. Exactly. So. Okay. And there are five ways to pack. It's exciting, but I put it off till the very last minute. And I've done so much packing over my lifetime for a whole family, down to just the two of us, and all the way down to just myself. And um, it is something I have friends who say, if, I'm, if we're leaving like a month from now, they'll go, have you started packing yet? Uh, no. And, um, but I, I will pack usually either the night before we leave, or I may be finishing up that morning, but I start the day before. I might have some things laid out, but we're gonna talk about how I do things. You may have your own style. 
And if you do, please let us know and we'll, we'll try yours. Um, there are five ways to pack. Uh, and I'm going to give these in the order that I used to pack. Cram it. Just stuff it in there. Fold it like you see these things here. Uh, roll it. Nestle it. Or cube it and bag it. The last is what I do now. And it saves space and it saves wrinkles. So let's talk about each style. And I'm going to use these, if we can pan over here just a second. I'm going to use these and show you how many people pack. Okay, we make the, the five different styles. Okay, there we go. Okay. So let's open up the suitcase. I'm move these out of your way. And a lot of people kind of go like this. And they're done. That's, that's the way they do it in the movies. Yes. When she gets mad and yes. she's going to leave, she just takes hangers and all. And that is cram it. Yeah. But as you can see, when you get to your destination, and especially if this thing is crammed full or not, these things are going to be just a wrinkly mess and they don't need to be. So there's the disadvantage of cramming, the advantage, it's real quick. Okay, mm -hmm. the next one is folded. So we have this dress, and this one happens to be knit, but we fold it in a nice little fold like that, and we put it in the suitcase. And here's the cami, and here are the pants, and here's another dress. So those are in a nice little stack in that suitcase. All right, that's how most people pack, I think. Um, the next one is roll it. And I'm gonna do this with these pants. It will be the easiest. These are leggings, not pants, I'm sorry. So what you do is start at the thick end and as you go, you roll it, and as you go, you keep the material straightened out with your thumbs, and you roll it and place it in. And then the next one, you roll and place it in, and you would be surprised how much that you can get into a suitcase by rolling. Now, some people put a, a rubber band, not a tight rubber band, right. but just a loose... A loose binding or mm -hmm. a ribbon or something yes. to hold it in place. Okay, this is very important for business travelers. If you have a suit and that suit can't go, you've got your one carry-on item and your small personal item to carry on, and the suit can't go like in a garment bag. You're gonna nestle it. And I did not bring a suit today, and I apologize for that. But basically, what you do to nestle, you have the suit hanging on a, on a sturdy hanger, and you clip that hanger through the little um, loop that's on the top here, and make sure the hanger can fit down in here. All right. Put it against the edge like that and drape the jacket over the side with the arms this way. Next, you're going to lay the skirt or the pants to that suit this way, lengthwise, and bring it up the sides and over the edge. All this is just open like this. Next, you're going to take a shirt and either lay it in symmetry with the jacket next on that third layer, or if you have a folded shirt or a laundered shirt that's folded, place it right in the middle. Next, you fill in the middle with your belts, your um, underwear that you're taking on the trip, socks, what have you. When you have this stacked and ready to go, you take an arm of the jacket and an arm of the jacket. You take the bottom of the jacket and pull it up here. And then you fold the top down 
and you're ready to go. So when you get there, your suit, your jacket is here, and you take everything out first, and then you hang your jacket up, and you hang your pants up, and it should be virtually wrinkle-free. So that's nestle it um, so that everything hugs itself. The very last way, and my favorite, and I brought a huge bag, uh, there are packing cubes. Samsonite, just about any of the major luggage companies make packing cubes. They can get expensive, it is worth it. Or you can buy these little uh, fancy zip bags, and they have a double track zip across here and a, a removable zipper. So if you lose one of these little zippers, then you can use one from another bag. Oh, that's handy. And you can fold or lay your clothes out flat, you know, with maybe just one fold in there. And you can put all of your blouses in one, all of your pants in another, or whatever, but they come, these bags come in different sizes. You can order these from any luggage shop. You can get them from a luggage shop. You can order them online. And I forget what this particular brand is called, but they're reusable. They're very sturdy plastic. And what you do when you get ready to pack is you slide your stack of clothes in there. And sometimes I'll have mini stacks and then you kind of straighten out any wrinkles and then you push down or you can roll up from the bottom and press the air out and then zip it shut it's kind of like putting something yeah. in the freezer bag you get the air the freezer, out you get the air out and you what, zip it shut zipper here Go. We're a little off track. But, yeah. But we got anyway. We got the concept it. is all those clothes are only that thick. And then you just pop them in your bag. In. And you can also pack those by the day. So if you're going to be gone for five days and you don't want to have to bother with thinking about what to put on for what event. You can pack them by day or by event and just plop them down in the suitcase. And then when you get where you're going, hang them in the closet and they're virtually wrinkle free. And that's so handy when you're going through security because they can really make a mess oh, yes. of your perfectly yes. packed uh, piece of luggage when they, I mean, they don't care. Right. They just do the, the, the jumble and go through from the center. I mean, flip things out and when you get it back, it looks it, like you yeah. that first toss method. You, right. What was that first method? Uh, 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 the cram it. The <laughs> cram it method because that's what they've done. They've undone your perfectly folded yes. and crammed everything and back crammed in. Crammed everything so in there. That allows them to see everything, hold it up, and see everything that's in that right. bag. So right. that's great for so security. So my purposes. favorite is Cubit, which is what the other uh, type from Samsonite and the luggage companies are called cubes, same concept, or bags. Some of these bags have a little thing on them that you attach a vacuum cleaner mm -hmm. and suck the air out, but I mean, who has a vacuum cleaner in their hotel room or right. on that uh, ship or, or right. at that resort? You know, you don't. So I prefer these simple bags, and um, I was gonna say later on, but I'll say now, you might want to have one of these with a sticker on it. And the one with the sticker on it is for dirty clothes. Yes. So that instead of just cramming dirty clothes in there with clean clothes or your shoes or whatever, you put them in that bag, you squeeze that air out, and you toss them right in there with the others. But have it labeled so that that is your dirty clothes bag. Um, and that would really be great, too, when you get to your destination. You don't have to try to... I can't remember now. What was I going to wear that with? Right. I can never remember. Right. I remember when I'm packing, but then that doesn't get on the hard drive. Right. So I can't remember. But that would just have it all easy, and especially with children too. Right. This is a 
kind of a gauzy, netty bag. I think a purse that I have came in this. I put my shoes in something like this. That way I can kind of wiggle them around in there into the spaces, but, uh, or I can lay them on top if I have room, which I seldom do, but it protects your dress shoes from getting all scuffed up and everything. Um, but the first thing I do, okay, we've talked about the different types, uh, ways to pack, cram it, fold it, roll it, nestle it, or cube or bag it. Regardless of where you go or the length of time away, there are some musts on tips for packing that I've found. Uh, the first thing I do after everything's all clean and I'm ready to pack, I leave the suitcases and the bags, you know, in the floor. I lay all my clothing out on my bed. And I do it in folded or laid out stacks of tops, dresses, uh, underwear and nightwear, um, pants, skirts, you know, all, everything I'm going to need is laid out on the bed. Um, and then the next thing you do, and this is painful for me, but I had to learn to do it, thin those items, then weed them out by one third or one half of what you've laid out on that bed. Because I promise you, you will not run out of clothes. And if you leave it the way you've had it out on that bed, you're gonna take tons of clothing that too you'll much. never need. Too yeah, much, too, too, much, too, too much. heavy, too cumbersome. So thin it by one third or one half and make yourself do it. This is probably only for women because men, for the most part, have a general tendency to pack less than what they need for any trip. My husband is a jewel, but he packs his own things now. And um, I'll say, do you have your khaki pants? Yes, I have one pair. All my husband wears is khaki, is khaki pants. pants. <laughs> and I'm going, put at least two pairs in there, you know, and inevitably something will get spilled on there. So anyway, um, think of everything that you're going to do. Consider the number of days of your trip, multiple activities in each day, as well as times that you could wear these items more than once. And ladies, yes, you can wear the same thing more than once. It's acceptable. Who's gonna remember? I know, seriously. <laughs> Who's gonna remember? But um, consider your travel locale, the weather, the climate, and any dress codes. If you have, if you're on a ship, let's say, and you have a formal night, you don't necessarily have to have a tux and a long gown, but you need to be dressed and not in blue jeans or shorts or anything. Most of the uh, nicer restaurants that you go to on any trip require gentlemen to have a shirt with a collar. Even at resorts, you don't walk in with, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. Right. So consider all of this when you're packing. And um, the weather is another big, big thing, but we'll, we'll get to that. Consider your travel locale in comparison to your departure locale, your destination as compared to your departure. Think about that and be sure to consider variations between the two places. You get on a plane in Chattanooga in the wintertime in February and it's 20 degrees outside and snowing. But it's 85 degrees in St. Thomas Virgin Islands when you land and you've got on boots and jeans and all of that. So think about what you're going to wear, what you have on on that plane or any travel means mm -hmm. and what you're gonna need to have on or you know layer off when you get to your destination. All right, let's stop right here, okay. Denise. Give Denise a break. We're gonna go uh, hear from our sponsors and when we come back, We'll continue. She's going to show you how to manage that packing 
and narrow it down and show you some more things you need to have that will make your trip more comfortable. So come back after the break and we'll continue. We're on the air 24 seven. A North Georgia taste of heaven. A fun place to be. And we're your family. You see TV. For over five decades, your neighborhood ShopRite supermarkets have been the standard for quality and service. Locally owned means you'll find a smile on every aisle. Best meats at the best prices. Farm fresh produce and always weekly specials on a variety of products. Get the ShopRite seal of approval. Stop in and you'll see you can't shop wrong at ShopRite. This week at ShopRite, they have assorted pork chops for $1.59, chicken thighs or drumsticks for $0.99, cents, and iceberg lettuce for $0.99. Cents. They also have food club cooking oil for $2.29, and again, that wonderful green cabbage, $0.39 cents a, a, a pound. Excuse me. And they also have Sara Lee honey wheat bread, two for $5, and... Again, uh, in their produce aisle, they have uh, yellow or zucchini squash, my favorite, $1.19 a pound, corn on the cob, three for $1.29, and eight ounce packages of sliced white mushrooms, two for $3. They also have country style pork ribs this week for $1.69, and um, if you're looking for some ham, they have center cut cooks ham steaks, only $2.99. That's my favorite. Go down and visit the folks at the local ShopRite store where they still take your groceries to the car. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. The same rules apply to financial success. Saving money is the first step towards financial independence. And at The Bank of Lafayette, we have an investment account for every situation. How much you save is not nearly as important as establishing a regular pattern of saving and placing of your money aside in a safe and secure place. Whimsical thinking and immediate gratification can rob you of a financially secure future and a safe and comfortable retirement. At The Bank of Lafayette, we can help you choose an investment account that will help you reach your immediate, short-term, and long-term goals. The one rule that always applies across every economic timeline and condition the sooner you begin saving, the faster your money will grow. Bank with confidence at The Bank of Lafayette, your hometown bank for more than 110 years. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. At the Rosewood Assisted Living and Memory Care, we have everything your senior could want in a safe, comfortable residence. Several levels of services include short-term housing for weekends or longer, assisted living where the staff provides a watchful eye while preserving your loved one's privacy and dignity, or independent living where residents are able to take care of themselves yet have access to all amenities and a sense of security. And the Rosewood on Battlefield Parkway specializes in memory care for patients of Alzheimer's or dementia. Call today for a tour of our campus. Metathrift Pharmacy, located at 324 West Patton Street in Lafayette, across from the ShopRite. Metathrift Pharmacy provides prescription drugs, including compounded prescriptions. They also have diabetic supplies, including custom diabetic shoes. They have lift chairs, potty chairs, shower seats, and other durable medical equipment. Metathrift Pharmacy in Lafayette has a friendly, well-trained staff that will help you with your drugstore needs, whether you're on the phone or in the store. You may also leave your refill request on their automated phone system available 24 hours a day. Make them your choice for your pharmacy needs. Metathrift Pharmacy, 706-638-3114. It's the Honey Bee Festival 2017 in Lafayette, Georgia, on the square beginning at 9 a.m. June the 3rd. Folks, there's live music, arts and crafts vendors, food vendors, a barbecue competition, baking contest, cruise in, antique tractors, the Birds of Prey exhibit from Chattanooga Nature Center, a free kid zone with face painting, games, and inflatables, honey bee and beekeeping tips, exhibits, and demonstrations, and featuring country music superstar Craig Morgan. Also, the Stepping Stones, Channing Wilson, Robbie Hopkins, Sons of Sailors, and many other groups. It's free admission, and it's sponsored by Pigeon Mountain Trading and CHI Memorial. The Honey Bee Festival on the square, June 3rd in Lafayette.
We're back now. Denise Shahan, my friend, is sharing her packing tips to help us get off to a good start so that our vacation is good from the beginning yes. and we get there with everything <laughs> we needed, but not everything we didn't need. Right. So, low we, stress. Low stress. Low stress. Uh, low stress. Um, the last thing to take into consideration, uh, well, there are many, but one other thing to take into consideration when you're packing, uh, if you're getting to your destination way ahead of check-in time for wherever your hotel, your ship, your transfer over to a train or a tour, um, if you're getting there hours early, consider what you are wearing, the appropriateness of it weather-wise, temperature-wise, and activity-wise. If you're going to the beach, and you get there at one o'clock, but your room is not ready, and it's stated that in, in the agreement uh, until four, then you're not gonna wanna just kinda piddle around. You're at the beach. Stick your swimsuit in a tote bag, in something that is quick access, either that or have it in one of these outside pockets of your luggage, and before you check that into the holding the, with the bellman at the hotel, grab that out of there and have it in a little bag and go to the ladies room and check, you know, change into that and you can enjoy your time at the beach. Maybe have that in your sunscreen together in right, the bag. Right, right. Um, remember, pack items you have to have in your carry-on bag. This is so important. Eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lens, case, and a small solution. You can't have anything over four ounces that's liquid small umbrella or a plastic rain poncho, and Helen has one of those out here. I have a okay. rain coat with a hood. Mm -hmm. and this is great because it gives you two hands to do what you need to when you mm -hmm. can pull this up over your head. It's great. Right. It gives and, you two uh, hands free. And, you know, the, the little umbrellas that fold up just about yay long, the totes umbrellas, that, that's real easy to stick down in a tote, and that's good to have all during your trip anyway mm -hmm. for uh, unexpected showers. Um, never, and, and people never let airport staff talk you into checking a bag that has your medications in it. Never, ever, ever. All medications that you take with you anywhere you go need to be, if they are prescription, they need to be in an appropriately marked prescription bottle. I know someone who did that. They lost his bag and it was a nightmare. Yes, yes. Trying to call back and it was on the weekend and call back and get those prescriptions. Absolutely. And it's a nightmare it was, yes. for within the country. Think about yeah, if you're on a country. Caribbean island mm -hmm. or in Europe or something like that, you know, it's virtually impossible yeah. and it is a nightmare, health-wise and stress-wise. Yes. Uh, don't forget your insulin if you're diabetic. If you sleep in a CPAP, that's your second personal device, personal bag that you can take. And remember, anything that you carry on, two, two items, one has to be in the overhead bin and one has to be underneath the seat in front of you. You, you can't put them in the overhead bin in a loaded airplane because everybody's gonna put these little roll-on things up there and there's just no room for that. Um, inhalers, all of that stuff does not ever need to be checked. Keep these with you during travel. Keep your passports, your photo ID, your boarding passes, travel documents, cell phones, anything like that with you, never in checked luggage. And let me show you a couple of things. I'll get these down from up here. And we were given this as a gift several years ago. It came from L.L. Bean, and it is a traveler's portfolio. It has this little wrist strap that you can secure there that's detachable, or you can carry it this way. It has an outside pocket that you can just stick your boarding pass in, and when you open it up, and it's got a good zipper closure on it, when you open it up, it has a place for your 
travel agents um, folder and that can slip right there behind that flap. It's got a place for a notepad, a pen, uh, a business card or you know your personal identifying information here and a, a pen holder in the middle. It's got this little zipped netted thing for anything that you might need. It's got these slots for credit cards, driver's license, and of course, your passports are secure in there. And always, and you can, what I do, Helen asked me, what do you do with that little uh, document portfolio? This is my favorite tote bag to carry on. I put it right down here and tuck that strap behind and it is with me. It's ready to just whip out. And you know, you're going and say you've got to change planes somewhere or you need to know uh, the name of your ship so that you can tell your um, taxi from the airport how to get to a ship or how to get to a hotel. You just reach into this carry-on bag and pull out your little travel portfolio and you've got all of that information right there invaluable um, this is an item you want to have with you too um, this is an around the neck and under the clothing flat carrier for money credit cards um, what have you will your passport yeah your passport will fit in here okay. too it has a side zipper so oh, it will fit okay. in there uh, your travel documents not so much except for maybe a boarding pass but anyway this is virtually theft proof because it's also RFID and if I don't know what those initials stand for but there are a lot of scammers out there and thieves and they have these little scanners that if they stand this close to you and they have a scanner with them, all they have to do is get within two feet of your uh, credit cards or anything with an electronic uh, scanning, device. scanning device on it and they have your information. So It this, may be in your wallet, but yes, they still have it. They mm -hmm. still have it and this is RFID proof. So it, it blocks that. So those are some things to keep with you. Anything you can't do without, keep it in your carry-on or your tote that you're carrying with you. All of that. Um, program Google Maps ahead of time on your cell phone. And let's see here. Okay, I'm on the Delta app right here. This is invaluable. Any airline has an app that you can put on your cell phone and you can click on one of the items. You can see your upcoming trips and information about uh, flight number, boarding time, gate, all of that. You also, when you're um, uh, downloading your boarding pass or printing it, I both print it and uh, scan it to this, it gives you the option of sending to your mobile device. And that way, you have your boarding pass on here. You don't have to keep up with an extra piece of paper. And uh, you just bring this up on your app and you lay it down like this on the scanner as you go through the gate to board your plane. And it just, you're in. So this thing is also, your cell phone is invaluable for um, the Google Maps and putting in your hotel address or the uh, docs address so that you don't have to fumble around through a bunch of papers. You can just get it on here and you just tap it. You can preload those things ahead of time and you just tap it at the appropriate time and tell the cab driver or the shuttle driver, this is where I need to go. And, uh, it, and if you can't speak the language, you just hold it out there and he can read it. Um, but anyway, all sorts of things on here. Put those travel apps on your mobile device uh, and keep that mobile device with you. Any emergency contacts, travel agent, anything like that. You never know what might pop up. If traveling international, take an electric adapter. If we could zoom in on this, please. 
Okay, this adapter in, in Europe, um, the electrical outlets are two-pronged. And this accommodates on that other end any standard US um, plug-in. Yeah, electrical plug. And then you plug this into the wall uh, in Europe and it, it's a converter. So if you try to plug a US device prong into that strange looking little circular outlet, it will short out your device. And this way you can still charge your cell phone, you can use your hair dryer, curling iron, whatever. So if you're going overseas, get one of these international adapters. And um, luggage scales. Luggage scales are a must. They're right. relatively small, and this is what they look like. And they're very lightweight, they're very compact, and what you do is set this little baby to zero, and then you set this to 50 pounds, your standard um, luggage weight for checked bags. I'm going to hold this now. Okay. Put it on. okay. We're going to see how much my little bag. So this Helen's is my, packed bag. Well, it's it is not even really packed. Okay. How much does that weigh? That weighs 18 pounds. Oh, that's not bad. But that's not bad. That's but not bad. Uh, when you pack for an extended trip, you're going to be right on the limit. I only have two pairs of pants in there. <laughs> and if you if you don't have if you don't have a scale, and you get to the check-in at an airport and they put your bag up on that scale and it exceeds 50 pounds it can cost in excess of a hundred dollars per bag so you would be in the middle of the airport pulling things out of the bag and putting them over in in another tote bag that you're gonna have to lug onto the plane so shoes and jeans are yes two of the heaviest shoes and jeans and uh, jackets or sweaters so think lightweight, think, think weight when you're packing. Um, these are relatively inexpensive at a luggage shop or online, and it's worth, it's worth far more than $100 that you would have to pay oh, yeah. for, for being two pounds over you know, the weight over limit. Weight. Don't forget, this is so important, don't forget to have a luggage tag on every item that you take with you, including carry-ons. Uh, have a little airline tag, you know, just a little cardboard thing. Try to have a luggage tag, though, that has a cover over it um, so that every Tom, Dick, and Harry can't see that I'm Denise Shahan and where I live and what my phone number and is. you're not home. No, and I'm not home, guess what? So, um, don't forget to have every piece tagged, and this is a, a must, too, that if you've ever lost luggage and that tag has gotten ripped off somehow, have that same information inside your checked bag. It's not necessary, really, for your carry-on, but inside that checked bag, right on top, so that when that bag is open, there's your information in case it gets misplaced. and. Um, that, that is invaluable too. Uh, let's see. Okay, and it is stunning. When you are at a luggage carousel or when you are leaving a ship and you go into this big warehouse and here is the whole ship's luggage uh, stacked up there, it is unbelievable how many people have a bag that look exactly like yours. So here's a little tip to help you with that tie some ribbon, bright colored ribbon around the handle or put a pom-pom on it or some sort of a, a charm that hangs from it but securely. Uh, put a luggage strap like this. Uh, get a bright colored luggage strap and it adjusts for different size luggage. Put it through the side handle and all the way around the bag and then tighten it just like a seat belt, as tight as you can get it on that bag. And that's another way when those things come off the conveyor belt at baggage claim 
or when you walk into that room and there are 10 black bags or 50 black bags sitting there, Five. yours is the one with the red strap mm -hmm. and the ribbon around the handle. Um, let's see here. Take that camera with you, regardless of where you're going, in that carry-on bag. Yes. And use it. Um, if traveling international, be certain to take the currency of that country with you, whether it's euros, whether it's lira or rubles or whatever, and check ahead of time. Uh, a lot of places take U.S. currency and U.S. credit cards. Not everybody takes American Express, so be sure and um, uh, have a Visa or a MasterCard with you as well and guard your passport at all times and keep it with you on your person at all times, but guard it as if it's gold. Uh, travel accessories, the little things can make a big difference. Ziploc bags, kitchen Ziploc bags uh, in gallon and quart sizes, airport regulations, TSA regulations actually, um, uh, specify that anything that is over four ounces has to, of liquid has to be in Same your carry-on. A quart size uh, Ziploc bag can carry travel size um, lotions, uh, shampoo, toothpaste, whatever. So grab those at you know at the store, or even if you're staying at a hotel, you know, grab a little set of those, and that way you've got your travel uh, toiletries with you. Don't forget that anything that you might have, like contact lens solution or um, nasal spray, also has to be in this as Hand well. Hand lotion, anything. Hand that, lotion. Uh, I've seen somebody take up lip gloss and mm -hmm. toss it because it wasn't in this plastic bag. So, um, and squeeze all the air out of everything before you close it up that's going in these bags because uh, compression in, a, in an airplane mm -hmm. causes things to expand and you could take like this uh, nasal inhaler with you and if the lid's not on it very securely and all the excess space in it squeezed out ahead of time that nasal spray is going to go mm -hmm. you know and everywhere. be all over everywhere so um, inflatable neck pillows these are blessings and i say inflatable because how many of us have been knocked almost unconscious by um by someone who has a backpack or a bag that they're hoisting up and they've got this neck pillow, the, the, the stationary neck pillows, through their luggage and this thing hits you in the pillow. So this is very small, I mean, hits you in the head. This thing is very small, very compact, takes up no room, weighs nothing, and you just blow it up. Another ideal thing for people with, um, who are short, like Helen and, and I, or who have uh, lower extremity swelling and discomfort and everything due to injury or age. This is an inflatable foot pillow and it blows up and it also positions your foot up a little higher so that the pressure is taken off of your, um, the back of your thigh from the seat. And also you can kind of move your foot around on it like this and, and get, keep your circulation going. So this is wonderful, especially for long trips. Support hose, um, any trip that, whether it's by car or what, but particularly flying, um, don't know what it is, but any time that you sit longer than an hour to an hour and a half, um, there's a thread of blood clots, mm -hmm. even on that short a flight. So be sure and move around either with the foot rest or get up and walk around if, you know, turbulence, if, if the seatbelt sign is off. And, um, you know, keep that in mind, but take good support hose and wear those. My husband has no circulation problems, but he wears the knee-high men's really tight support socks when he travels too. So it's just an extra precaution. Noise reduction headphones are a must on an airplane, in a train, uh, whatever. If, it's, if you're in large crowds of people and also a plus to that is uh, either the headphones or the earbuds 
and you can download some music ahead of time on your um, cell phone or your uh, e-reader or something like that and listen to that. Be sure and do all your downloads, whether it's movies or games or whatever, before you board the plane because you can't do downloads while you're in flight. A small travel blanket is a comfort necessity. They also make those, you know, sell those at luggage shops and online. And so a little eye mask tucked into your carry-on bag for total darkness if you're one who likes to sleep when you travel and that way you know you've got a little eye mask there um uh let's see packing cubes or bags to me are the best thing since sliced bread uh the luggage straps are lifesavers we've talked about the personal kit and you might want to take that with you um on board and freshen up you know just before you reach your destination climate control the key answer is layers and I have something here I'm going to hold this up just very briefly and this is going to take care of what do I wear several things I have picked a color combo of pink mauve and purple here the key answer is layers. Instead of taking lots of heavy clothing, jackets and coats and all of this, this is a very lightweight dress that can also double as a long tunic accented by a very lightweight scarf. I have pink slacks under here or pink leggings. And for layering effect again, I have this long um, cardigan and it can dress up it can also be tied off or knotted up and it's lightweight knit and provides an extra layer of warmth for you will keep you warm on the plane. yes so keep your colors in one or two color families and that way you can mix and match what you wear put your dirty clothes aside we've talked about shoes pack a crossbody bag this is my standard everyday crossbody bag and you're hands free, but wear that bag to the front to thwart any uh, theft attempts and keep one hand on it if, if you have a hand available. Um, styles, you don't have to be trendy or cheap, just be smart. Denise, this is so much. I hope everybody <laughs> took notes because it's a lot to take in, a lot to remember, but certainly all that will make you more comfortable and make your vacation much more enjoyable so we hope everybody's going to take notes I, i've been taking notes myself <laughs> but denise is going to pack for me so <laughs> <laughs> happy summer everybody <laughs> we hope you have a safe and enjoyable summer and your packing's going to be just right thank you denise thank so you much. helen thank you <laughs>